Open your Bibles tonight, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter number 1. 2 Peter chapter number 1. Tonight I hope you come praying. It's a simple message. But I feel like it's what God would have me to do. Just please pray. Please pray. Have your way. If you're able to stand tonight in respect to the Word of God, 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to start reading in verse number 12, and, we'll start read, and I'm going to read down through verse number 15. The Bible says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you again this evening, we do thank you for the day. We thank you for the way that you took care of us and watched over us and supplied our every need. We thank you, Father, for the health and strength that you've given us to be able to get up and go. We thank you for safekeeping from harm and danger, both seen and unseen. We thank you, Father, for the privilege we have to be back in your house tonight for each one of these that's come out. We thank you that we've got this time, this opportunity to come and meet together again and to worship together in spirit and truth. But Father, I thank you more, most of all tonight for saving me. Thank you for keeping me saved. Thank you for Jesus. I thank you for that finished work at Calvary. Thank you for the blood that he shed. Thankful that that blood tonight was sufficient to cleanse me of my sin. And Lord, I realize tonight that I'm undeserving. I'm unworthy and I'll never be worthy of what Jesus did for me. And Father, I beg you to forgive me while I've let you down and while I've come short and while I've failed you. And Father, I ask you now to go with us through the rest of this service. I ask you, Lord, to take away anything that might hinder or quench your spirit. Pray that you'll clear our minds, clear our hearts. Father, I beg you tonight to help me to see and do exactly what you have done. Pray, Lord, tonight for that fresh touch, for that fresh anointing from on high. Asking you, God, tonight to put your words in my mouth. And, Father, for me not to overstep, but for me to only say and do what you'd have done. So I beg you, God, tonight, watch my mouth. Don't let me say it wrong. Don't let me lead anybody astray. But, Father, help me to say only what would be according to your will. Father, please, tonight, be with these folk that are here. I thank you for them. I appreciate them. I thank you for those that are watching online. Truly thankful tonight, Father, we've got this opportunity to come together. Go with us through this service. Have your way. For we ask it in the sweet, precious, holy name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the Apostle Peter begins to talk about... He is dead. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul made the statement, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Knew he was getting ready to go. The apostle Peter knew he was getting ready to go, and Peter knew that he was not going to die an old man in bed. He was not going to die. From some sickness Jesus had told him years before in John chapter 21. He said, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and thou walkest where thou would. But he said, when you're old, he said, somebody else will gird you and lead you where you would not and will stretch out your hands. The Bible says, signifying what death he had died, knowing that he's going to be dying on the cross. Like Christ did. The Apostle Peter don't know how much time he's got left. And it's almost like I'm wanting to tell you some things and, 
And some of these things you've heard me say before, and you've heard me preach it before, but he said, I'm going to tell them to you again. He said, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. He said, I want you to be fixed. I want you to be settled. I want you to be grounded. Enough wishy-washy and enough back and forth goes on already in, in some churches. And i told you before, and if you've been around many preachers for many years and several times, depending on where they're at, they'll preach something different over here than what they'll preach over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That ain't right. Yeah. Uh, you know, be solid, be sound, mm -hmm. be sure, be fixed, be established. If, you know, if I believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ here, then I ought to preach the gospel, the same gospel, if I'm somewhere else. That's right. I made the statement Sunday. I know that there are some denominations that believe that when Jesus came out of the tomb, he came out as a spirit and did not physically, bodily arise from the grave. I, I, I can't preach that. It wouldn't matter where I was at. He came out. Yeah. And he came out bodily. Yeah. He didn't come out as a spoon. We talked about that Sunday. Yeah. But he said we need to be fixed. We need to be established in this present truth. Yeah, I think it means as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle even if our Lord Jesus has showed me moreover. I will endeavor that you may be able or that you yeah, may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. The Apostle Peter said, I'm going to repeat some things. Yeah. And I'm going to keep repeating them. <laughs> the Apostle Peter knew that there was value in repetition. Right. Now, years ago when I was a boy, I didn't really know the word multiplication. But I knew what my times tables was. Mm -hmm. And the way I learned to multiply was over and over and over and over and over again. Two times two is four. Four times four is sixteen. You know, two times four is eight. Three times four is twelve. Ten times ten is a hundred. Twelve times twelve is one hundred forty-four. And you just kept repeating them over and over and over until you learned them. You didn't want to step back and say, "Okay, if four times eight, uh, let's see, if I've got well, there's eight, and eight plus eight is sixteen, and." Add another 8 is 24, and another 8 is 30. No, 4 times 8 is 32. Learn it. Yeah. And that's what the Apostle Peter said. I understand tonight that there are things that once in a while God will put on my heart, and I may be preach on the same subject on Sunday, and another week or two later do the same subject again, and sometime down the road the same one, and people will say, well, you know what? I, I wish the preacher would get off. Well, you know what? Maybe God's waiting for it to take root in somebody's heart. Right. Maybe he's giving them another opportunity. I remember, I think it was Dr. B.R. Lakin made the statement one time. He said a little, little preacher come up to him and said, Well, said I've heard you preach twice and heard you preach the same message both times. He said, I looked at him and said, Well, I've heard you preach three or four times and I ain't got a clue what you said none of them. <laughs> you know, I'd rather you hear me say the same thing three services in a row than not to hear what I'm saying at all. Right. I'd rather have something worthwhile to say than for something that's not worth listening to. Right. So, whatever comes out of the book, and Peter, whatever you're preaching, you look at the letters that Paul wrote and how many of those letters has some of the same subjects in them. See, they were tried and true. They were inspired of God. They were things that the church needed to hear. And whatever we hear, as he said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, all Scripture is good. All Scripture is profitable. We need it. I don't care what it is. And I don't care how many times we've heard it. Because one more time, and you heard it Sunday, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The way our faith is going to grow is to hear the Word 
and to read the Word. And I'm going to say this again that I've said Sunday. It's one of the reasons that people's faith is lacking like it is. is because they're, they, they're slack when it comes to getting in the Word. Yeah. It's that plain. It's that simple. So just for a few minutes tonight, and I ain't going to keep you but just a few, and I mean that tonight. Let's think about some of these things that we should never get tired of hearing. I don't care what they are tonight. You'll never, listen, I never get tired of hearing, you know, about Joshua. Just all he did was walk around Jericho. Once a day for six days. On the seventh day, walked around and seven times blew the trumpet and God kicked the walls down. I mean, they didn't have to take a big cannon. They didn't have to scale the walls. They were obedient to what God did and God did what he said he'd do. Folks, I, I, we ought to enjoy hearing those things about the power of God. Now, when you look at all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four of those Gospels tell us about, they don't all tell us about the birth of Christ, because I'm glad the Lamb came, mm -hmm. but the Lamb in the manger didn't save me. Right. Yeah. All four of those Gospels tell us about the crucifixion and the bodily resurrection, because that's what saves us. Right. Because He went to the cross and shed that blood, and then He didn't just stay in that cross Thank God they took him off the cross, put him in a tomb, but he didn't stay in the tomb. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions, but he rose again for our justification. I'm thankful all four of those men that wrote that gospel, or wrote those gospels under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, put that gospel of Christ in there. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Yeah. It's because he lives that I'll live also. It's the blood of Christ, God's Son, that cleansed me from all sin. I'm sorry he had to go to that cross, but I sure am glad that it did. Because if the blood had not been shed, had not been shed, I would still be in my sins tonight. I'd still be lost. I'd still be on the road to hell. But he is risen tonight. He's alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father, still making intercession for you and I. It lets us know. Listen, it lets us know. That was the main purpose. That's why they called him the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Mark. The gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to John. We need to know that everything in those four books were good. But none of the lepers he cleansed did me any good. When he walked into Nain and he got to that funeral procession and that only son of that woman was laying there dead, he raised, and that was great for them. But it didn't do me any good. When he raised Jairus' daughter, when he raised Lazarus from the tomb, when he healed those lepers, when he spit in the dirt in John chapter 9 and made clay and put it on that blind man's eyes, that's great for him. But it did me no good. But thank God when he went to that cross. Right. Now it's getting personal. And when he come out of that tomb, now it's getting personal. And thank God one of these days he's coming back and he promises he would. And thank God that's when I'm going home with him. Amen. So don't ever get tired of hearing it. Some people, the only time they hear it is at Easter. And that's because that's the only time they ever come to church. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There's, we, you know, we don't have, we, we, we have service the other 50 Sundays of the, of the year. Amen. Not just Christmas and New Year. That's yeah. right. Oh, and we don't just have service on Sunday morning. Right. Yeah. And I'm hoping shortly to get back to Sunday school. Amen. Yeah. yeah. We had Sunday school before 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. We did. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it. Y'all y'all up that wasn't here, you missed it. Yep. Yes. You missed a good opportunity. We're living in a world today. And I know that you get tired sometimes of hearing me talk about this dark world that we're living in. And that's why our light's got to keep shining. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, perilous times come. Yeah. He told us in 1 Thessalonians that we knew that day was going to come because it'd be a great falling away. And then that man of sin, that, that son of perdition is going to be revealed. Jesus told us that things are going to get bad. The Bible teaches us that we are going to be persecuted. We will be buffeted. We will be mocked. 
we will may be made fun of because of our faith. You and I tonight, there may be some people that laughs at us for what we believe, but you know what? We're still safe to practice what we believe. Right. I'm still safe. Listen, I'm thankful tonight. We don't have to have being with, and it, Lord knows it may come to that, and I know there's been some situations in other churches, but as of tonight, we don't have armed men with shotguns patrolling outside while we're inside here. Yeah. Right. Now, is it going to come to that? It might. Right. But for right now, they ain't a one of us got an excuse not to be in the house of God. Right. Right. Now, is the world getting worse? Yeah, the world's getting worse. Mm -hmm. world's getting darker. I see things and I hear about things that are being taught in schools yeah. uh, that I never, mm -hmm. unto the Lord, I never thought imaginable. Yeah. I'm hearing laws and bills come out of Washington and even out of Raleigh for that matter that I never thought would be possible. Yeah. That things that are ungodly and things that are an abomination in the sight of God are now not only legal, they're celebrated. People are applauding that. Yep. Yeah. I don't understand, but it's coming. Now, when you get over in the book of Jude, and, and I know some people, they'll say, Preacher, you need to get off of some of that negative stuff and get back on that good stuff. It's all good if it's in the Word of God right. because we need to be warned in the book of Jude. He begins to talk about how the apostasy is coming. Mm -hmm. And it's not but just one little chapter in that book. You ought to read it. Yeah. You ought to read about how Enoch prophesied that God's coming back, that Christ is coming back, and he will execute judgment yeah. on the ungodly. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. I don't say that with glee. I don't say it with happiness. What I'm saying it is, it's a fact. It's a fact according to the Word of God. And what you and I need to do is warn the lost and dying work. Don't look at them and say, well, you know, one of these days they're going to get theirs. No, because except for the grace of God, we'd be them. Yeah, that's right. Except for God's saving grace. I understand that they have a choice. They have a choice. But you said a few minutes ago, we made a lot of bad choices in our lives. We all have. Amen. You can't change history, so ain't you thankful for the blood? That's right, amen. amen. But he begins to talk about that apostasy. He begins to talk about how the Hebrews in the wilderness, said, they didn't learn a thing. Even after God told them, they, none of you over the age of 20 years old going into the promise land, your carcasses going to die in the wilderness, they still whined and complained and belly ached and wasn't happy with what God had done for them. Yep. Still, I mean all the way up to the time they crossed the Jordan and went over into the promised land there at the plains next to Jericho. The manna fell every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still whined. They still complained. Talked about them. He talked about those fallen angels. Talked about those third of the, the angels that when Lucifer rebelled in heaven that he brought down with He talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. How the wickedness was punished by God. Yeah. Listen to me. I believe tonight that everything that we see, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. And I think when he created it, he created it perfect. Yeah. And it's me and you that's messed it up. Yeah. We can't blame anybody if a judgment of God fell on our nation right now. There'd be nobody to blame but us. Yeah. Yeah. That's fact. Sodom and Gomorrah, he told them, and you say, but preacher, they were wicked and they didn't have any choice. No, they had already met Abraham. Yeah. Keep that in mind. That's right. Abraham had already come to the rescue. Abraham had already told him when the king of Sodom said, I'm, I think I'm right. If I'm wrong, somebody check me out. But in the book of Genesis, when the king of Sodom came and said, here, you take everything you brought back except the people. Abraham said, no, because I ain't going to have nobody tell you or nobody saying that you're the one that made me rich. Everything I've got, God's blessed me with. Amen. So they had already heard about the true and the living God. And they, they chose, they made the decision to reject it. He talked about Cain. And we know what Cain did. Cain hated his brother because Cain was ungodly and Abel was righteous. He talked about Balaam, how Balaam was a prophet. Yet Balaam tried to prophesy for a prophet. Balaam tried to show people how to weaken the people of God. Let me tell you something tonight. 
We don't need to be weakened. We need to be strengthened. We need to be lifted up. We need to be encouraged. We need to, you know, we need to hear something that's going to help us get through this. And talked about Korah. The way he went up and began to badmouth Moses. And you know the, you know what happened? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you something. These people that do. I, I've known people that wasn't saved that were still respectful to God's people. Yep. Mm -hmm. But these that know better, mm -hmm. that are nothing but wicked, yep. the Bible still says the earth opened up and swallowed them alive into the pit. Right. Yep. Right. Hey, I'm going to tell you. I Again, I understand that I, I am nothing but a sinner saved by grace, and if I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell already. Yeah. But when I read about Korah, and Abi uh, what's his name? Dathan and Abiram being swallowed up like that. When I read about those two she bears that come out of the woods because they're making fun of Elisha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I read about how the fire fell from heaven because those groups of soldiers made fun of Elijah. Yeah. Let me tell you something, folks. You think God don't know his people? You don't think God loves his people? Those wicked better look out. Yeah. Yeah. Look out. For the Bible teaches that one of these days. The, what did Jesus himself say? Jesus himself said it's better. He wasn't talking about little bitty children. He talked about God's children. Right. Yeah. But he said it's better for a millstone to be hung around their neck and then cast into the depths of the sea than to offend one of these little ones. Yeah. So he began to talk about all of that and those examples of apostasy. But Jude said, but I'm going to put you in remembrance of this even though you once knew it. Yeah. I know you know this, but I'm going to remind you. I know you know this, but I'm going to warn you. I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you again. Folks, let me tell you something. You might, you might get tired of some repetition sometimes. But what we need to do if it's the Word of God, we need to keep right on with it and say, bring it on, preacher. That's right. John wrote over in 1 John chapter 2, he said, I don't write a new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye heard from the beginning. And down in chapter 3, he tells us what that commandment is. The message that you heard from the beginning was that ye love one another. Now, Jesus made the statement over in the Gospel according to Matthew. Right now, I can't tell you what chapter it was. But he said, and the, while iniquity abounds, the love of many shall wax cold. The worse the world gets, the less love there is. The worse the world gets, the less compassion there is. Yeah. I saw, and I'm going to mention this, I saw back in the summer when there were some people that said they did what they did because they were upset over a man getting killed by a police officer. Mm -hmm. But what I saw wasn't protesting. Right. What I saw was thugs and thieves. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And y'all say what you want to, but anybody that was going into them stores and carrying out televisions, or going into the drug stores grabbing handfuls of bottles, yep. Yeah. Or going into these stores and coming out with these fine clothes, going into those. Goes grocery stores and bring it out all them big expensive cuts of meat. Mm -hmm. They didn't give a hoot about George Floyd. Right. 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 Iniquity abounds and the love of many wax cold. Right. That gave them an excuse to just act devilish and act wicked. Right. Say what you want to say. Right. That's true. And I don't care if they was black, white, green, or yellow. Right. Makes no difference. Makes no difference. I don't care what happens. I don't have the right to go in Brother Doug's house 
and say, well, you know what? I just lost my job. I'm going to go in his house and I'm going to get everything he's got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, don't wait and just make me unemployed. That makes me a thief. But anyway, yeah, the love is not what it should be. And I'm not talking right now even about a husband and wife or parents and children. Loving church ain't what it ought to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Love to one another is not what it ought to be. Right. And I know some <laughs> situations that have come up, and it ain't funny, I'm sorry, but some situations that have come up that had nothing to do with caring and compassion, had everything about can we just do what will help me. Yeah. I have known people in my life that the only reason they were in church was because it was a good place to network for business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you pray for them to go bankrupt. So then they'd seek God. This ain't a place. Listen to me. This ain't a place to come in and work out business deals. Right. right. This is not a place to come in and just be able to climb a social ladder just, well, I'm a member of such and such church. Well, glory to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the Lord show up? Or is he on the outside knocking, wanting to come in? Yeah. Yeah. Church is not a status symbol. We come into the house of God, it ought to be because we love God and we love each other. Right. Plain. Simple. Yeah. You say, preacher, we hear that a lot. Yeah. Makes me wonder who in here has got hatred in their heart. Right. I'm going to tell this. Roger and I were talking out here on the sidewalk Sunday afternoon. And everybody was gone. Brother Kenny was in here. Gwen was in here. And I think Debbie Joe was in here. We were outside. And we got to talking about there's a lot of these people will use grace. I mentioned it Sunday. They use grace as an occasion or a license to sin. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, I'm not living in the law, so I'm living in grace. I can do what I want to do. And Roger said, you know what? If people really thought about what that meant, because in the Old Testament, thou shalt not kill men. I hadn't murdered anybody, so I ain't guilty. All right. But Jesus said, yeah. if we've got hatred in our heart, yep. we're guilty of murder. Yep. Yep. Right. That's right. Moses said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Oh, preacher, I ain't never put my hands on another woman. Never. Never. Jesus said, if you look at a woman. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to touch her. That's right. You can be sitting in your house looking in a magazine, gentlemen. That's right. Or the idiot box. Right. And if you just look at her with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what. I, this, this thing about law and grace, you say what you want to. Grace is not a license to sin. Great grace is just God being good to us when we all need to go to hell and deserve to go to hell. That's right. Amen. But what God said in the book of Deuteronomy still applies today. Love God and love each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Deuteronomy, the word deutero actually means two. And when you get into the book of Deuteronomy, and I, and I told you I, I'm convinced that the, the book of Deuteronomy only covers just the space of a, a few days. Because Moses is going back. See, that old generation is dead. Mm -hmm. Moses is the only one left. Right. And Moses knows what's coming because, man, they're right there at the Jordan. And Moses knows, I can't cross the Jordan. So the only thing that's keeping these people from going to the other side is me dying. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. I'd hate to know God had to kill me before He really started blessing y'all. Mm. Don't tell me that can't happen. Yep. Yeah. But He begins before He, because He knows what's happening. He knows what the time is. 120 years old. Still as strong as He was when He was 40. Bible says it's. I was not dead, nor was his natural force abated. Moses was still a man. 120, he could probably still whoop up on Pharaoh. But he began to tell him, and he began to repeat him, and he began to repeat the laws that were given. He repeated the commandments that he had gotten back on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 20. He began to give the same instructions to that generation that the other generation had had. This one. The generation that is there right now, nobody but him and Joshua and Caleb remembers Egypt. Right. Nobody. They don't remember the Red Sea. They don't remember Kadesh Barney. Well, they might remember Kadesh Barney, the youngest ones. But he begins to tell them. You said, why, why would he bother to do that? Because what was good for the old generation... It's still good for today's generation. Amen. And the preachers of today, this is why the world's in the shape it's in. The preachers of today are not preaching that same old gospel and that same old word that used to be preached. Right. Well, times have changed, but God's not. That's right. But times have changed. The word's not. Yeah. Times have changed. Hell's not. Bless God, when I'm dead and gone, if the Lord ain't come back yet, these youngins that's in here tonight, I hope that there's somebody with enough backbone and a touch from God that'll still preach the same word that's being preached. Amen. It don't need to... Look, I'm going to say this again. You remember that first Passover? Is that Exodus chapter 14? 12? 12, 13, 14. That first Passover lamb... They were given specific instructions. Now you hear me. I like to take a good pan of stew beef and I like to cook it down. I, I want it, I want that broth to get thick. Boy, that's good putting over gravy I don't, or on biscuits. I don't care what nobody says. But anytime you boil something, you know what you do to the flavor of the meat? Yeah. You water it down. Mm -hmm. And God specifically told them about that Passover lamb. Eat not of it raw or sodden with water. Right. Roast it with fire. You say, why fire? Because fire will give you the best flavor that there is. Yeah. John the Baptist told them what? I baptize you with water. Yeah. But there's one coming behind me. I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoe latches that's going to baptize you with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Right. We don't need the Word of God watered down or dumbed down any more than it already has yeah, been. That's right. And that's why I like my old version of the Bible. Excuse me. I like the right version of the Bible. Amen. Amen. That's right. Because these are coming like, well, I can understand them better. If you want wisdom, ask of God who giveth liberally and upbraideth Amen. not. Amen. We don't need it dumbed down. What did I say Sunday? We don't need to stay on the milk. Eventually, get out of the high chair. Yeah. And get you a knife and fork. Mm -hmm. And he reminds them why their parents are dead. Yeah. Let me tell you why your daddy died. Let me tell you why your mama died. Let me tell you why your grandpa ain't here. It's because they rejected God and did not believe him and did not have any faith. Folks, I'm going to tell you tonight. If my grandpa is in hell tonight, it would be because he had no faith. That's right. Listen to me. If I end up in hell, it's going to be because I have no faith. Yeah. And if you end up in hell, yeah. it'll be because you have no faith. Again, nothing to do with church membership. You say, but preacher, what he said has nothing to do with me. 
Uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says these all happened for examples mm -hmm. and were written for our admonition. That's right. So for any of you cats that tell me we don't need the Old Testament, according to God we do. Amen. Amen. Because what happened back then, the same God's on the throne, and you and I tonight need to be warned that the same thing can happen to us. And again, I'm going to say this. There's too many people who have said down through the years the United States will never be defeated. He allowed mm. Israel to go into bondage. Yes. Right. Who do we think we are? Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches me in Ezekiel chapter 38, 39 that he's even going to bring Russia down. I don't care how big <laughs> they are. Right. It's coming. Mm -hmm. So let me get done. I'm thankful. In everything else. And you can call it negative preaching if you want to, but it ain't negative. It's all good. Amen. And it's for our good. Mm -hmm. But don't ever forget. Yeah, the world's getting dark. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Hearts of men are waxing worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Love's getting colder. Mm -hmm. Churches are starting to shut down because people aren't going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know one in Summerfield now, but two churches have gone together and combined because neither one of them could afford to stay open by themselves. Yeah. Couldn't make a bill. But I'm glad. And don't you ever get tired of hearing it. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God, believe also in me. Amen. In my father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. He's coming back. You get tired of hearing that? You shouldn't. Acts chapter 1, Jesus is out there on the Mount of Olives and all of a sudden, the cloud receives him out of their sight. They standing there still looking up, and all of a sudden two men says, You men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, yeah. whom you see ascending, will come again in like manner. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul said, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God, the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Mm -hmm. And then thank God I see it capped in Revelation chapter 4. Anybody that will tell you that the church is going through the tribulation, you need to rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Mm -hmm. The tribulation begins in Revelation chapter 6. And in Revelation chapter 4, John says, I, All of a sudden I saw a door open in heaven, and the voice said unto me, Come up hither. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus stood at the tomb that day in Bethany in John chapter 11, I said, Lazarus, come forth. The day's going to come. And he's going to come back on that same glory cloud. And he's going to say, Children, come up hither. Yeah. And we're going home to be with the Lord. The earth, church, the church is not mentioned in on earth again until chapter 19 when we come back. Yeah. We're full comfort one another with these words. I know that there's things that we hear over and over and over again. But those are things that we need to hear over and over. Yeah. And Peter said, I'm going to warn you because I want you to remember them after I'm gone. Matter of fact, Miss Lucy and Miss Gwen, before we come in tonight, was talking, made the statement. You know, we want to see our grandchildren grow up, but we don't want our grandchildren to forget about us. Yeah. We want them to be old enough that they'll remember us. Yeah. And you know what? Let's remember what the Word says. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's remember what the Word says. Yeah. And so one more time. You hear something every service, and you're going to hear it again. The Bible still says in Romans chapter 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart, God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved with the heart. Now believeth unto righteousness with mouth confession is made unto salvation. And thank God you move over to, chapter, to verse number 13, and it still says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We hear some of the same things over and over. 
But ain't you thankful that when you rejected the leading and the drawing of the Spirit of God the first time, that when you went back, you heard the preacher preach the gospel again, and that Spirit of God started drawing again? Of course, all of y'all might not say the first time you was under conviction. I don't know. That might not apply to y'all. But I'm thankful for a God that's long-suffering to us but not willing that any should perish. Right. So Peter said, I'm going to keep telling you and I'm going to keep reminding you because I know the value of repetition. I know that what's said you need to hear over and over again. Thank God, He's coming back. He's coming back. And the only thing that's going to matter is have you been born again. Father, we thank You for the day Thank you for every blessing and mercy you supplied. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we've had to be back in your house tonight and for each one of these that's come out. We thank you for every home and family represented. And thank you, Lord, that we had an opportunity to look at a portion of your word. And I pray, God, tonight I said what you'd have me to say. And I pray I said it in the right way. Father, I pray that you continue to encourage your children, lift them up. Remind them, Lord, that yeah, the world's getting worse and it's getting darker. But the darker it gets, Jesus himself said, when you see these things happen, lift up for your redemption draw off now. Father, I'm thankful he's coming again. I'm thankful he's coming after his church. Father, watch over your people and please be with us in the rest of this service. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.